So one thing I really encourage you to do when we jump on these calls is to create a space and you really want to create a space for yourself in life anyway, in your home, that is like your goddess space. So whether you've got your candles or your incense, I've got my cacao with me today. I have my journals and all my pretty things. I'm outside today because it's a beautiful day out here, but also I have better internet connection out here. So usually I would be in my goddess space for this call. <laughs> so let me know in the chat where you guys are tuning in from whilst we wait 30 more seconds before we get started. You might want to run and grab a drink or just something that helps you ground into this moment and makes this feel like a sacred time that you're taking for you because you're worthy. You're worthy of pouring into. Ellie Beach, Gold Coast. Big scalp, not heard of that before. Mornington, North Brizzy. Tambourine Mountain, I'm sure it's beautiful up there today. New Zealand, hey Ange. <clears throat> All right. Let's just ground down with some deep breaths and come back into our bodies. I know a lot of us are mamas on here and the morning can feel so chaotic and we're just up here and our energy is chaotic and it's really hard to create from that space of energy. So I like to place a palm on my heart and a palm on my womb space, on my stomach. Just close your eyes down, however you feel comfortable. Sometimes I like to have my palms facing up if I'm in a receiving energy kind of mood. If you're in a giving to you mood, then palm on heart. And I just want to take, I want you to take a few really conscious breaths, deep breath in through the nose and deep sigh out through the mouth. As you breathe in, breathe in whatever energy you feel you want to embody more of today. Maybe love, maybe it's joy, maybe it's playfulness, maybe it's peace. And as you sigh out, sigh out all of the energies that are not currently serving your highest self. For me, that usually is rush energy. <laughs> rush, 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 rush. So deep breath in, filling up your body with as much oxygen and light as you can. Let it fill every inch of your being and deep sigh out. Just let go whatever you need to let go of today. And I want you to take a moment to make a silent promise to yourself as you continue breathing. A promise to your higher self. What are you going to be loyal to today? What are you going to lean into today in your energy field? Are you going to be loyal to expanding states of joy, states of love, states of abundance? Are you going to be loyal to a feeling of courage, of calmness, of strength, of grace? of your own personal power. When you know what that commitment is, make that promise to yourself today that that is how you're going to show up. And when you feel yourself coming out of alignment, you're going to catch yourself in a moment of self-awareness and you're going to realign with your promise. And that is going to be your practice today. So take one more deep breath. And as you sigh out, come back to this moment where you're feeling grounded and present. We get to have a beautiful chat today. I was thinking, I've been thinking for days, what is it that I really want to share today? Because we've got this one call for our beautiful community our NHC community and our ambassadors. And the call is around becoming a self-ignited woman. And it's potentially such a vast topic and I didn't really know where to start with it. And then it kind of came to me this morning. I had a moment of clarity last night and then it came to me this morning, just the insights of three powerful lessons 
that I learned in my life. And I want to take you on that journey. And I want to share with you the life changing transformational lessons that I got from those moments that have helped me become the woman that I am today. And these are all deeply emotional. And I know that there will be a resonance that you will be able to think and feel into it in the space that you're into and draw some relevance from it and how you can apply it to your own life. If you've been in this space with me for a long time, you may have heard some of these lessons before, but maybe you will feel or hear something on a different level because you're ready for the next phase or you're ready to hear a different part of the story. So I just want to encourage everyone that just keep your hearts and minds open. If I say anything that feels triggering to you, know that I love you and I'm coming from a space of love and I'm sharing my story and you can try that truth on. And if it fits, if parts of it fit amazing, then you can delve into that in your own practice outside of this call. And if something doesn't feel good for you in your truth and it's not a fit for you, that's totally okay because we all have different truths, right? So I know I feel that you will be able to hold space in my sharing without projecting any of your own traumas and triggers and vice versa, okay? And just be in that space of receiving and knowing it's coming from a loving place. So our happiness as women is our responsibility, but we have been conditioned to outsource our happiness throughout our lives. It's finding the Prince Charming. It's, you know, it, it's leaning into all of these fairy tales. It's outsourcing our healing. It's outsourcing our blame for why we don't feel whole. It's outsourcing our happiness to our partners or our pain to our exes or, you know, whatever trauma or experiences you've been through know that everybody has their own journey and their own story but the moment that you realize that you are the one in control and we don't we can't control everything that happens around us because we're in co-creation right we're on a on a planet with billions of people who are also keep co-creating at the same time so not everything is in our power but what is in our power is how we respond how we move forward what we carry with us, what we let go of, whether we're able to just be in the present moment rather than living in realities that no longer exist or are yet to be created, so past or future. And the more that we can come back to the present moment as a healed and whole human, the more powerful you're going to be and the more freedom you're going to feel and the more exciting and exhilarating and blissful your life is going to feel. So my moment of self-awareness, my first lesson happened, Madeline, my youngest, is about to turn 10. I was going to say nine. She's about to turn 10. So 10 years ago, um, she was a newborn. And this was my first massive, massive awakening where it was fully conscious. There's lots of lessons before this, but very conscious transformation. And this was a really challenging time of my life. Their father was working 70 hours a week. I have no family here. Um, my youngest had started prep. Her school was far away. It was like, and all mums can relate, right? I'm not having a pity party, but it's like you get the baby in the car. She screams, the newborn screams all the way to school drop off. It's a massive school. You've got to get the baby out when she's finally fallen asleep to take the prep kid in. You come back to the car. Now she's awake. She screams all the way home. It's like just that time where it's the most joyful because you've brought new life into this world, but also one of the most incredibly challenging moments of, of um, life too. Lots of things to grow through. You're here now, Lisa. Well, hopefully you can um, take some beauty from this lesson. Um, and so. I lived in this um, complex and we had a very narrow driveway and we had a big four wheel drive. And so in order to get the car in the carport, I would literally have to pull in the mirrors just to park it. Right. And so <laughs> this particular lesson happened on bin day and every single week without fail, the garbage trucks would leave the bins in the middle of my driveway. So I'd been on school run Madeline had screamed all the way there. She'd screamed all the way home. So at this point, it's an hour of screaming newborn in the car. And all I want to do is get in the house and calm her down. 
and it's bin day and the bins are in the freaking middle of the driveway again. So I have to park in the middle of the road, get out, move the bins, pull the windows. Like it just, everything felt hard, right? And one of my dear friends came over that day and I was just having a pity party, just full of complaining and frustration, just so much internal friction, which was driven by many things, obviously not by this one thing. And she just looked at me and and in a moment of courage, and I'm not sure whether it was conscious courage on her part, but you know how sometimes we have those friends who love us enough to say what needs to be said. And she gave me the greatest gift that day. And she said to me, I think you need to, she didn't say, oh my God, you're such a complaining bitch. (laughs) All she said was, I think you need to read this book called The Magic. And that's all she said, but it, it left an imprint on me. And I think I asked her what it was about. And she said, oh, it's a 30 day gratitude practice. And without saying anything, she said a thousand words without saying anything, but you need to read this book. She said a lot to me. And I thought, wow, if my friend is thinking that I'm, I need to, I need a gratitude practice, then what energy am I projecting that is probably not enjoyable to be in my space alone? I'm not enjoying life. So I was in so much frustration that I wanted to change. I immediately went out and bought that book that day. And I spent the next 30 days devoted to the 30 day gratitude practice. And within a day, my whole way of thinking and being shifted. And you might be able to relate to this is that we are the average of our surrounds. And so the frequency of the people that you spend the most time with often become your frequency. And I love my family dearly. But I was raised in an environment of negative thinkers, of tall poppy syndrome, of the glass is half empty. And so that was my frequency of thinking as a habitual state. That was my temperament, right? I didn't have role models. The only role model I had in my life of a stable and balanced temperament was my stepmom. And she was only in my life for brief periods. And when things got bad, I always thought of her and she's still my role model for that. But she wasn't she wasn't setting the tone of my life. She wasn't in my life enough. And so within those 30 days, my whole way of thinking and therefore being, because what we think creates an emotion and a frequency, which becomes our way of being, my whole way of being was rewired in that moment. And so instead of wanting to scream at the top of top of my lungs every bin day when the bins were in the middle of the road, I was like, thank goodness, thank you that someone, that I live in a country, that someone comes and picks my bins up and all I need to do is get out of my car and move them out of the way. Like, thank you. You know, and it's it's that what side am I looking in from? What perspective do I take to these little micro things that happen throughout our day? What angle are we looking in at that? And what energy do we embody when we think about that? You know, often it's our partners. We get into these habitual states of temperament of just no gratitude, bitching, complaining, criticism, controlling, closing off. And, you know, part of most of that is driven by how we're feeling in our in-state, internal state of being. And I'm going to get to that next lesson in a moment. But the first way, the easiest way, the most enlightening moment I had that I believe built the foundation for everything that was to come in my self-ignited journey was to learn the art of gratitude to rewire my thinking where it became my habitual way of being that even when things are going wrong in my life, I can lean into gratitude and where is this right? What is right in this moment? Rather than all this shit is wrong. I'm so frustrated. Why does this always happen to me? I'm so unlucky. You know, what you continually think about, you bring about. And so if you constantly spend time in that space and your life is always going to feel full of friction. Whereas when you lean into what is right, how is this serving me? What is the beauty in this moment? Where are the gifts? Then you create these beautiful states and ways of being that create goodness in your life. You see the glass half full, right? Because both realities always exist in the one moment. We choose which side of that fence we're going to stand on. So that is my first tip. Gratitude changes everything. It truly does. And I'm not talking about 
a bullshit gratitude journal where you write th three things that you're grateful for and all it is is words. I'm talking about deeply feeling it in your heart, feeling that expansiveness, that light, that joy, that blissful state of gratitude. You are alive. You live in one of the most wealthy countries in the world, regardless of your challenges right now. And I'm not saying that they don't, they're not valid, but regardless, there are so many people in this world that have it so much worse than we do here. And we are so wealthy, so abundant and so deeply blessed. And if you look for all the reasons why and how, if you look for that evidence, you will find it. If you look for the evidence every day of why your life is so shit, you will find that evidence. All of the evidence is always there. It just is up to you what you're going to choose to focus on. So that was lesson number one. If you feel like that's where you're at and you're in the, the foundation part of your spiritual journey and your growth and evolution as a woman and coming into your higher self where you are seen as that graceful, beautiful, enriched, enlightened being, which is what I believe is all of our soul's purposes, then that is like foundation. So the book is called The Magic. It's a 30-day gratitude practice. It will take you through all areas of your life to help to open your mind and heart for you to see the greatness that exists in all areas of your life. Um, and I encourage you to definitely go and get that. It's Rhonda Byrne, I believe is the, the author. And I think it's about $12 at Big W. You can also get the app if you like technology. Um, I just encourage you to write with pen and paper when you do your gratitude and truly embody the feeling. Don't just make it words. It's more important that it's a feeling because feeling is what creates our reality. So lesson number two, and this was a really big one. This was, um, this is probably, that was my, my trend my foundation shift and this was like my massive transformation shift this second lesson so I was in the kitchen one day and I must have snapped at the girls this was this is maybe six years ago now and my partner at the time turned around and said, the girls are walking on eggshells around you. And that was another comment where a thousand words were said in that one phrase. It slapped me in the face. And in that moment, I realized I had become the person that I never wanted to be. I was embodying the energy that I still cringe thinking about my childhood today. That, that energy of walking on eggshells around someone. And I knew, maybe I didn't know how to verbalize it in that moment, but I knew it was how I felt on the inside was causing that emotional state. So as women, let me say it a different way, as women, our emotional state, our emotional tone sets the tone of the entire household. So the children, we are, we are the leader of our children in terms of their emotional state. So when we're feeling anxious, they're anxious. Have you ever noticed, especially if you have young ones, toddlers, their temperaments often reflect the temperament that we're feeling in the moment. So when we're really frustrated, they're really challenging <laughs> to deal with, right? Often they have their tantrums and their wildest moments when we're feeling the most restricted and challenged ourselves because they're reflecting our energy. They're our mirrors. They're our greatest teachers. And my children, certainly I've reparented my, myself through parenting them. That is for sure. That is the greatest gift. So not only do we set the tone for them, but if you're in a relationship with a man, then Soul purpose. One in, uh, in a relationship, their sole purpose is to make their woman happy. And so when we're constantly unhappy, he feels like a failure every single day and he begins to resent. And um, what's the word? Like, not scared. Um, like when he comes in the door, like he's already just cringing at what energy am I walking into, right? It causes uncertainty and just like I've failed again. She's still fucking unhappy, right? And this is where we outsource that it's their responsibility to make us happy. But 90% of that responsibility is our own 
um, responsibility and they're just the bonus. They're just the overflow, right? We cannot outsource our happiness in that way. And when we make them responsible, we already set them up to fail. And this will be one of the biggest um, risks that can cause demise in your relationship because a truly masculine man after years of realizing I'm failing at this and she's never going to be happy will have the self-respect to leave and a more feminine man will just resign to the fact that you're unhappy and he's just going to stay and be unhappy because he doesn't have the self-worth to leave right so that's in terms of relationship that's how it can translate so your emotional tone if you're constantly anxious you teach that energy to your children. If you're constantly hating yourself, and this was one of my biggest um, flaws that I recognized was my self-loathing. I have two daughters was teaching them that energy that they are not enough. When we don't believe we are enough, everyone in our space believes they are not enough. When we live our life in constant self-criticism and self-judgment, everyone around us feels criticized and judged because when you look in the mirror, and you constantly tell yourself you're not perfect, everyone around you is looking at themselves. Well, I'm not perfect like that either. Or if you think that you keep failing at things or nothing's ever good enough, you're speaking that language to everybody in your space. So even if you're not yet at the space of self-love and self-worth that you make change for you, I know that your children are the best fuel ever and hopefully in a short space of time you will have enough self-love to do it for you first and foremost but for me my primary fuel in the beginning was I just I knew that I was not doing a good job of this for my children and I had to change for them right because they were just going to recreate the trauma um, cycle because I was modeling it to them. I was modeling to them lack of self-love, lack of self-worth and incredible anxiety and internal friction in my being because I didn't accept myself. When you are filled with internal noise and friction, that shows up in all of your relationships. If you're constantly in battle in the relationships in your life, it is a reflection of what is going on inside your being. So that was a really big wake up call to me and the universe delivered the most incredible um, workshops to me at that time. Um, and what basically essentially what I learned about was something, uh, something called living in a beautiful state. And the whole training, and I, I went to India for 10 days for this training. Um, so it's not, it, I can definitely um, find the links. It, they're called One World Academy if you want to write it down. Um, but I learned about internal freedom and something called eye consciousness and one consciousness. And this is life changing. If you get this, all of the noise in your head is self-focused. Now I'm going to talk about suffering states, but I want to just make space for grief, true grief. We're going to put that aside. Okay. Because I feel that grief should be felt and moved through and grief comes and goes. And that's different to what I'm talking about. I'm talking about every other feeling that isn't a state of love. Anything outside of love is false thinking. Anything outside of love is not true reality. It is a perception. It is a structure. It is a fixed belief that you have decided to lean into. All beliefs are made up. You make up your beliefs based on your value system and the structures that you've been conditioned into throughout your childhood. And unfortunately, many of them are fucking you up, <laughs> right? Many of them are causing you a great deal of pain. The, anything that you hold on to as this is true, there's no other way, there's no other perspective, you're wrong, I'm right, it will cause you pain. And women are very guilty of this, of being incredibly inflexible. I would say that my greatest challenges to embody new states of being were being fucking inflexible, so inflexible, incapable of coping with change and uncertainty and losing my playful spirit, my fun spirit when I became a mom, which is the most radiant magnetic energy for a woman is your beautiful, sexy, fun, playful spirit. You know, let me know in the chat if you can resonate with this. Do you remember the last time you truly laughed out loud and you were free and radiant and gorgeous and playful, especially with your lover? Because that's the energy that he fell in love with. And then we go and have children and it's like, where did, where did that person go? 
you have to bring that energy forward, right? You have to cultivate it within you by putting things in your life that help you align with it, right? You need to put yourself first. You need to schedule things in your diary that bring that out. You need to remember how to laugh and have fun, right? And not wait for permission or for someone to tell you people are walking on eggshells around you. Don't wait. You're worthy of doing that now. So I want to tell you about the I consciousness and one consciousness, but I want to read your chapter out of one of their books. This is one of my favorite books, Freedom in Relationships. And so I want you to think about what internal freedom means when I read this. So what do we mean by freedom? It is not about external freedom. It is about an internal state in which we are free of guilt and anger, free of the need to make others wrong and ourselves right. It is about consciously freeing ourselves from hurt rather than indulging in it for a day, a month, a year, or even a lifetime. Let me know if you resonate with this. As humans, we are so fucking loyal to our pain. It's as if if we let go of it, then we're saying that it was okay, whoever caused us pain. And we hold on to it for a lifetime because we don't want to let it go. And we're loyal to our suffering rather than loyal to expanding states of joy and gratitude and all of the goodness that's in your life. You keep carrying the shit of your past that doesn't even exist anymore. And you choose to dwell in those emotions rather than just fucking put the bag down of shit and like, look, and let's move forward, right? Stop playing the victim. It doesn't make what happened to you right, but you continue the cycle of being a victim for as long as you carry it with you. Take your freaking power back and put it in your past and move forward as a whole human being. Holding on to hurt only stokes the fire of the past. Freedom is born from awareness. These lessons were moments of self-awareness that set me free. Living from this place of awareness, you are not looking to be rescued and freed from your own suffering. There is no blame to lay on others. You are not holding another person as a prisoner in your mind, demanding that he or she unlock you from your sorrows and fears. Freedom is a gift that we can give to ourselves through developing our own awareness. In awareness, there is a letting go of the perceptions that distort reality and keep us separate and alone. It is only in freedom that love can be born. In love, there is no fear, blame, or recrimination. Sorrow does not exist. In love, there is no fear of being judged by another. In love, there is no calculation. In love, there are no agendas. There is a total giving of oneself. Love is connection. Love is inclusive. Regardless of what is happening in your relationships, this is freedom. Born from awareness can bring forth a healing and acceptance of yourself and the other. With freedom in relationships, life will never be the same again, nor will you. So how do you set yourself free? It's developing the muscle of self-awareness, developing the muscle of self-awareness and stopping the indulging in these behaviors and patterns that keep us trapped in our own guilt, shame, blame, uh, anxiety. Eye consciousness is obsessive self-thinking anytime you are trapped in your head you are obsessing about yourself it is self-centric thinking why is this happening to me why are they doing this to me why are you saying that this is hurting me how dare you this is right you're wrong this is my beliefs you should agree with me i'm anxious i'm not pretty enough i'm not this enough i could never do that It's all self-obsessive thinking, right? Is this blowing? Like when I heard this, I was like, oh my God, it's so true. And I'm not judging you. We all do it. So as we delve into this conversation, I want to say one thing to you. You have a choice in this moment to be excited and celebrate whatever lands for you today that this information has landed in your lap and the transformational journey that you may choose to go on as a consequence and be excited about your future. Or you can stay in victim mode and self-centric thinking and your comfort zone by continuing behaviors like, I feel so guilty that I didn't know this before. Oh my God, I'm a shit person because I'm so self-obsessed, right? 
because that's what comes up in these coaching calls a lot is poor me. Oh my God, I'm guilty. I'm shaming myself because that's who I am. We all do it. I still do it from time to time. I've just developed the muscle of self-awareness and realigning into one consciousness quicker than I used to be capable of. We are all human. Okay. So lean this way, look forward. One, so I consciousness is any suffering state that is outside of love. But let's, I'm going to put grief aside from those suffering states. One consciousness is a feeling of connection. To me, if you think about a moment where you felt so grateful, you could cry and you truly witnessed and embodied the absolute beauty in the moment. That's what a being in a beautiful state feels like. That's what one consciousness feels like. You drop from your head into your heart and you are one with the world. You are one with your human. You are one with your children. You feel connection to everything and you feel love. You are love. So there's no lack of worthiness. There's no lack. There is no lack. You are whole and you are connected. That's what a beautiful state feels like. So expanding your ability of self-awareness and catching yourself in moments of eye consciousness and developing the art of dropping into a beautiful space through gratitude practice where you rewire your thinking, you literally rewire your brain through a gratitude practice, through meditation, through just being present with the moment, with breath. Um, sometimes just when you get good at it, it's literally just a short uh, thought shift, Okay. It will change your life. It will change your relationships. You become love. You become enjoyable to be in, right? Uh, be around. You think about when you're in states of tension and fr friction, it's not enjoyable to be in your energy space. That's that feeling of walking on eggshells around you. Okay. So that's spiritually right and the other thing i would say is work on your flexibility around your perceptions your beliefs and your structures because there are always multiple perspectives there are always multiple truths to one moment and you the greater your capacity to expand your awareness to include the experience of the people in your communication that you're in communication with the greater ease and love and joy you're going to experience in those relationships because you free them of that you're wrong, I'm right mentality, right? And also you allow space for people in your life just to love their lives and be them. You know, think about times where your friend was busy and they didn't call you when you expected them to or you haven't seen them in a while or their value system. I, I remember this was another lesson for me. I have this one friend in my life and business and success has always been much higher on their priority values as mine of love and connection. So they're higher in business. I'm higher in love and connection. And I could never understand why they showed up in a way that to me wasn't what friendship meant and I just held her to task for so many years and just judged her and shamed her, like not to her face, but just like internally for so many years until I realized and started to understand values and there is no right or wrong. We just had a values misalignment. And so we're still friends today and I love her and I respect her and I'm inspired by her values and the way that she shows up and I can now fully embrace and accept who she is. There are parts of our friendship that aren't as deep as I have with other friendships who are in alignment with my value system. But I give her the freedom to be who she is. I no longer judge her based on my belief system, my values. Can you let people just love their life? And can you just love yours and not have this you know, constant like rules and regulations on how people have to behave. And most importantly, how you have to behave. I spent so many of my years people pleasing and running around doing shit for people because of my lack of love for self, because I thought like subconsciously, I realized I was trying to receive love through doing that. 
And now that I no longer care what anyone thinks of me and I trust that the right people love me and the right people are in my space and the right people accept me and understand who I am. And part of who I am is that I have a close circle of friends because I don't have the energy to hold large circles like some people do. And the right people in my life accept that. And I'm not a people pleaser anymore. I have strong boundaries on what I like to do with my time. And I'm completely okay with that. I live my whole life outside of that, of service to others. And I feel so happy in who I am. And I feel freedom to live life in alignment with my joy. And as a consequence, it is so easy to be my friend these days because I have no expectation of my friends. If I don't hear from them, all it means is they're busy. And they're busy doing things that bring them joy. It doesn't mean I'm not good enough. It doesn't mean I'm not a good friend. It doesn't mean they're not being a good friend. So the more you can let go of these structures and belief systems and have more flexibility whilst having strong boundaries that serve you. So it's understanding what belief systems are not serving you and having strong boundaries around the ones that do flexing your mind right constantly trying things on putting beliefs down you can always pick them back up if you miss it right so that was a huge um the next huge lesson for me i forgot where i was going to go with that from there let me just have a moment to think so shifting to that one consciousness space and practicing that journaling is a really powerful tool with that um and you know whenever you feel anything outside of love spend time journaling and having inner pause. This is another thing that I learned around one consciousness is practicing the art of inner pause. As women, we are so impulsive in our moment of challenge and frustration. We react and we impulsively lash out. Often at times where the storm of emotion and feeling and when you can cultivate the art of inner pause, you'll have more grace in your relationships. Before you react, spend time in contemplation and understanding your triggers and looking from all angles and perspectives and being flexible in your structures and then respond consciously when you understand your thoughts and feelings and you can communicate like a high value woman. This will repair and mend your relationships. That was another big lesson for me. Another huge lesson. So that's where I was going. So that's the spiritual element of setting yourself free. There is a biochemical element that I want to touch on. And this is gender intelligence coaching, um, which I'm currently doing. It's a separate topic, but I felt that it was relevant to share this today because it is extremely powerful. There are things that are part of our nature as women, whether you identify as a feminine woman or not biologically, If you're on this call and you were born a woman, biologically, you have a chemical structure that is undeniable no matter what sexual orientation you have or what you identify as. And so it's a vast topic, but I'm going to hone on one in on one point that can change your life. We have a chemical called oxytocin in our body. And for women, for men, it's testosterone. That is their Um, happy hormone where they feel balanced and where they function at their highest self biochemically. Ours is oxytocin. And the things that deplete oxytocin are things that stress a woman, which is feeling unsupported, working all day long and then coming home and switching into mother mode. So being, we've been pushed as women over the past 50 years into masculine roles. Okay. Regardless of what you believe about this, on a society level and what is politically correct, biochemically, it is harming our bodies. When you become conscious of how to harness the energy, we can stand in both masculine and feminine without harming our bodies the way we have done unconsciously for the last 50 years. And that is understanding how to bring your body back into biochemical balance when you've been depleting your oxytocin stores all day long doing masculine activities or choosing career paths that support your feminine energy, such as the career path of being an NHC ambassador, because it's all about service. It is the majority of the energy is based in the feminine energy. So when we do things where we are multitasking and juggling, we have at least two, if not four times the burden than our mums generally did because of how much we hold as women. And this depletes our oxytocin. When our oxytocin stores are depleted, we're cranky, 
we're not happy, we're not fun to be around, we don't feel well in our being, we snap easily, we feel anxious, all of the energies that are not like, you know, our divine feminine come out in us, okay? And our, our masculine energy rises. Our test because we've been doing all these testosterone producing things and we haven't brought ourselves back into balance. And this has detrimental, um, detrimental effects in your relationship as well because it pushes your partner out of balance with their testosterone. So oxytocin is your happy hormone. And this is 90% of your responsibility to cultivate. And it's actually really easy to boost your oxytocin. And this is life-changing because even just on the level of relationships, when oxytocin is low, you will feel resentment in your relationship. When oxytocin is high, it is impossible to feel resentment. It is biochemically impossible to be in a space of resentment when you have high oxytocin. And if we go back to the spiritual of what I was talking about, living in a beautiful state, it is impossible to feel suffering states of resentment, fear, anxiety. So when you approach it from the spiritual and the biochemical, you practice a way of being that creates harmony in your body, which creates harmony in your relationships because the relationship with self will reflect your experience in every relationship you have externally. So you need to harness this relationship of harmony with yourself first and you will experience that in everything in your external, right? To the same degree. So how do you boost your oxytocin? Doing feminine things. Creating time where you love on yourself. When you create time and you do self-love activities, when you do it for yourself, it actually boosts a lot faster and higher than your partner doing things for you that boost it. So your partner can do things like take you out on a date, bring home flowers, give you a non-sexual massage, tell you you're beautiful. All of these things spike your oxytocin. And certainly in a loving relationship, you want to understand how you can do things that serve each other's balance hormonally, right? Do things in a loving space that serve the feminine and you vice versa. So serving one another's happiness. But 90% of it is your responsibility and it actually creates a bigger boost when you do it for yourself. So getting your diary out and carving out space for you every week where it's goddess day or femme time or whatever resonates for you. Creating a space in your home that is your goddess space where you meditate, light candles, have pretty things where you go and sit and just take deep breaths and put on the self-ignited playlist before your husband walks through the door in the afternoon so that you have taken responsibility to be back in your feminine, playful, flowing state to greet him in that energy, right? Because love always goes first. If you truly love your partner, then love always goes first. So not only does it serve you to be in that state because you will be in your higher self in that zone, but you will serve your relationship by being in that space too, right? Um, creating something. So creation boosts oxytocin. Um, so art, cooking, coffee with a girlfriend or talking to a girlfriend on the phone. So when stress levels go up for a woman, seesaw effect, our cortisol rises and our oxytocin plummets. When our oxytocin goes up, cortisol lowers. Cortisol causes um, digestive dysfunction. I'm yet to meet a woman that doesn't have some kind of digestive disturb disturbance. And it's because of the stress that we hold today in our society. It causes cancer, headaches, anxiety, like it cortisol, high cortisol levels are designed to be in our bodies for short bursts of time when we're running from lions, <laughs> but we live in that space all day and then we don't balance ourselves out. Okay. So one of the ways that women lower cortisol and up oxytocin is by talking. One of the things that raises a man's um, cortisol is being talked to too much. <laughs> So when our husbands get home, we unleash and we want to talk his ear off. And he's just like, oh my God, like, can you just stop talking? So we have, we're so opposite. So you need to stop treating your husband like one of your girlfriends. And it doesn't mean he shouldn't learn the art of holding space and allowing you some femme time to just blah, get it out for 10 minutes. And he just holds space and says nothing that will serve your relationship. But if you truly need to rant and rave and get stuff off your chest and just talk about it, call a girlfriend or have coffee with a girlfriend that will raise your oxytocin and it will serve your relationship better. 
run a bath, hire a coach, jump on these clarity calls, dance, putting music on and dancing when I'm out of flow and out of alignment, especially when I know my partner's coming home and I have, I'm, you know, quite a masculine energy in terms of my success and my drive. So I have to be the polar opposite in my relationship. And so one of the things I do to consciously shift states from business mode, boss babe mode, get shit done mode is I dance and put music on and I just you know, get back into my body, right? Being in my body rather than in my head. So um, we have a hundred lists. Uh, um, I have a list of a hundred ways to boost your oxytocin. So if you haven't got that, if you're in my clarity coaching group, you will have that in your guide, but I will post that in the NHC group so that you can take a look at that. But I want you to consciously plan every day for something where you take responsibility for keeping your oxytocin levels high and your feminine energy high, because this is where you will feel the most radiant, the most self-ignited, and you will enjoy your own company more and people will enjoy being around you. When you are radiant in your feminine energy, you are incredibly breathtaking and mag magnetic. We can all think of women who by society's standard may not be the typical like, you know, when you open a magazine and it's all airbrushed and they've got the perfect body and, and you know, like all the things, right? Like that's what society says is beautiful. But we can all think of women who may not like be a match for what society is telling us. But when we're in their energy, we're like, gosh, she is breathtaking. Like what a beautiful woman. And it's because her energy is radiating from her being. Right. So um, let me check that I've gotten. So the importance with um, what I just shared around embodying that energy coming into one consciousness biochemically and spiritually is women are thinking and feeling creatures. So we have super highways that connect our left and right hemispheres of our brain. So we have the capacity to think, feel, and speak an incredible, um, like, like our vocabulary is unmatched to men in the moment of thinking and feeling. Men can generally only think or feel, okay? They're not great. They don't have the super highways. And that's why often when we're in communication battles, like I remember saying in my past relationships so often, what is wrong with you? But now that I understand the differences between men and women, I understand there's actually nothing wrong with him. It's very masculine man. And he was behaving completely as a man should and does, right? And now I understand it. But I used to judge it because I didn't understand it. So the thing around women being thinking and feeling creatures is um, manifestation or creating in life is a balanced energy between thinking and feeling. So we have creation superpowers. So if we spend our entire days thinking and feeling that we're shit, unworthy, failures, not good enough, frustrated, annoyed at life, like nitpicking at the little things, that is what we're creating in our reality, Fr friction and tension in our relationships and in our world. So it's important to harness these energies because then you raise the frequency at which you're thinking and feeling at and if you are living from a beautiful state, then you create a beautiful world and experience around you. That's why this is so important. That is why it's important to self-ignite. So the third lesson, and this one again is equally powerful. I spent so much of my life in personal development, having amazing breakthroughs, learning incredible stuff, and I still hated myself. I still loathed myself. I still had the noise in my head and I understood all of the stuff I'd learned, but I didn't feel any differently. And I'd healed some things and all of that. And it was beautiful. It was all worth it. And I was at one of these um, courses with my beautiful mentors in India. It was my first one, actually. It was my first one with them. It was actually on the Gold Coast. It was a two-day one with them. And Right at the beginning, I set an intention just quietly in my head, like, please help me figure this out today. I need to know why do I still hate myself? And we, they got us to close our eyes right at the beginning and they did just this really simple 10 minute meditation. And often when you ask the universe, the universe will deliver. And the answer hit me like a ton of bricks. And when it hit me, it was so goddamn obvious. I couldn't believe that I spent 10 years in personal development and hadn't figured it out yet. <laughs> it was just like, oh my God, of course, of course. And so 
And then through the course of that um, meditation, we went into a very, very deep one. And I'll, I'll tell you what, um, what manifested for me in that. But what I realized was I, ha I, I have two amazing parents that love me deeply, that did their best. I don't hold them accountable for any of the pain that I experienced. Like I see that they truly love me to their capacity of their being and they did the best with what they knew and their level of consciousness. So there's nothing to forgive. That's the highest form of forgiveness, recognizing it all served you. I'm an incredibly independent, powerful woman today. And the foundation of that was how I was parented and the love that they gave me at the capacity they were able to give and their incredible role models in their own way. And so there's nothing to forgive in my childhood. However, if, you, if I wrote on paper my experience with them, you would think I would have daddy issues because he lived away in Darwin. I only saw him a couple of times a year. He fully loved us, but he, he's not very emotionally conscious. Um, and, you know, like a lot of my patterns and habits I've had to break were definitely like DNA passed through him. And then my mom, like just sacrificed her entire life for us kids, still does to this day, just an incredible woman. And for, but I just have resisted her love my entire life. And there is no good reason that I can think of. And I didn't understand why, why do I resist her love? And the moment came to me, which I'm sure is incredibly painful for her, by the way, I think if my kids reject me like that, when they're older, I will be heartbroken. So the moment in the moment of meditation, it came to me, it was so fucking obvious. My mother is such a reflection of me. And I hated myself so much that being in my mother's space made me feel so uncomfortable because it made me look in the mirror and see parts of me that I didn't accept. And so I would always feel anxious in her space and just resist wanting to be near her. And so I knew that I needed to heal that because it was, it was ruining my relationship with um, my girl's father. It was ruining all of my relationships and it wasn't role model, modeling to my girls. Like I, I was heartbroken at the thought of them growing up and not seeing their own worthiness to be loved. When you don't love yourself, you reject love. You cannot receive it. And again, a man will feel like a failure when you reject his love. Okay, or your children, whoever in your space. So we went into a much deeper meditation and um, you're kind of put in a meditative state through breathing where you almost hallucinate and you can have visions. And my vision was out of nowhere, like I didn't cultivate this. I all of a sudden was just taken through this portal and I was, um, I was standing there looking at myself as a baby like just being born and the immense wave of love that came over me looking at myself as a baby and that moment of understanding that I am so fully worthy of love, just like every other baby that is born. So fully worthy. I was born worthy. You think about the moment your child was born and you held them in your arms for the first time and that depth of love and devotion, the universe holds that for you. And there's nothing you had to do in order to be worthy. And then I went on this journey of watching myself grow up. And it was interesting because as I got older, it was harder for me to hold that level of love for myself. And that's what I've worked on since then. But the understanding and the aha moment and the awakening of I am love and I am that baby. Like I, I there is nothing I need to do to be worthy. And it, it has changed my life and it has changed my relationships because I fully see myself. I fully accept and own all parts of myself. I understand that without my shadow, my light doesn't exist. And without my light, my shadow, like they're both important. I understand that as humans, we all have all shades and I absolutely have flaws and you have flaws and we all have flaws and we all embody all the different energies. It's just that we've lent into some harder than we have others. And so I've spent my time cultivating and embodying and leaning into states that serve me, like developing my grace and leaning into the energy of grace more rather than friction and short temper and like, you know, all of those energies I used to spiral into. I lean into love. I lean into embracing my light. I lean into forgiveness and compassion for myself because if you can't forgive and have compassion for yourself, you will hold everyone accountable around you. For so many things, you hold people to task so highly because that's how you see yourself. So it was so life-changing. And I, I want to share with you guys um, 
if you were on my call last week, you saw this and um, I'm going to talk about it from a different space today. Um, but the scale of self-mastery and the importance of being able to see all of yourself, because as you scale your self-mastery, as you ascend into the woman you were born to journey into, that wise goddess, that graceful goddess, that loving goddess, right? You think about the older women who just embody that wisdom because they've been on that journey of not knowing themselves. We go through our childhood not knowing ourselves and just trying to fit in, being what the crowd wants us to be. Then we have kids and we completely lose ourselves. We didn't even find ourselves. Now I'm a mother, so now I'm going to be what society says I need to be as a mother. Then they grow up and they go to school or they move out and we're left with ourselves, facing ourselves, and we don't even know who the fuck we are. We haven't seen ourselves. We haven't owned it. We haven't stepped into everything we were meant to be, right? And so this scale of self-mastery, I want you to accept where you are and know that it's exactly where you're meant to be. It is your divine timing to hear this now. And that no matter where you're at, there are women who are an energetic match who need you to be where you are now in order to take the ascension with you, in order to journey with you, right? So there is no judgment. Judgment is just going to hold you back, okay? It's all acceptance because the more you can embody where you are more now, the faster you're going to quantum leap into the next energy frequency you need to be in order to step into the next level of your growth and evolution as a woman. So I'm going to share the screen so you can see this. The scale of self-mastery. Can you guys see that okay? So the first level as a woman, and a lot of us will be in, in this space on this call, and, um, and that's completely normal and okay. But you can journey through the first couple of levels relatively quickly once this awareness lands in your lap. So the first level is I am someone. You are journeying home and rediscovering your worthiness, identity and gifts that you bring to the world. You are learning that you are worthy of making money and experiencing freedom and joy simply by doing what you love. And as you explore and find yourself and share your journey, as you go, you're going to inspire other women who are in this same phase of self-ignition. So this level is all about coming home and claiming that I am someone and I am worthy. And if you're on this call in this group, you are someone and you are important. You are the one. You are just as important as I am in this space. Your energy makes up this space, right? And we calibrate our energy together. You are someone. You are worthy. You're important. And you're journeying home and rediscovering that. The next level is I am me. You own who you are and you stand in this space confidently and without apology. This is me. This is what I do. This is what I stand for. You no longer shape shift and people please. I did a lot of that. Who do I need to be in this space? I was constantly, constantly monitoring what I was said in order to be liked and it was fucking painful and exhausting. You get to be yourself and be paid for it. This is like the ultimate freedom. The more you bring yourself to the table, the more your business and world expands, right? So you're scaling your self-mastery. So you start scaling your business and your relationship experiences. You're working on the connection between being me and abundance creation. The more you are you, the you you were born to be, right? The more you come back to your authenticity, the more abundance you're going to create in all areas of your life. Whether abundance means feeling more love, earning more money, whatever that might mean to you. It starts with me, owning who you are, knowing your boundaries, knowing that no is a full sentence. No, I'm. thank you so much for the offer. Unfortunately, I can't make it without a, an excuse. It's showing up on your social media. This is me. This is what I love. And knowing that your people will find you. This is one of the biz, biggest mistakes people make with social media is showing up as who they think their audience want them to be and trying to shape shift, which will limit your growth versus this is me. Some of my audience will be confused for a time and some might leave, but my people are coming. My people are coming. 
The next level is I am seen. You've seen all parts of yourself, your light and your shadow, and you are in full acceptance of all your shades. In seeing yourself, the world has seen you. This was the lesson that I learned. The world accepts and loves you as deeply as you accept and love yourself. The more intimate you are with yourself, the more intimate you are with life and your audience. You embody the frequency, people want to see me, and yet in being seen, you no longer need anything. You are self-validated. You are self-loved. Regardless of whether you're in the relationship of your dreams, you feel and experience a depth of love that you haven't experienced before. Regardless of whether people validate you with likes and comments on your social media, you are fully self-validated and you don't need any of that. Your power comes from within you, not from outside of you. Because you own all parts of yourself, you cannot be knocked down by neg ferret comments. You don't fear them. You don't attract them because you hold space. You hold space. You know, I remember even in my business, a time where I was such a neg ferret and I didn't understand it. When people come into my space who have that mentality, I fully see that I was that. I understand that. I can love people through that and accept them where they are because I see myself so fully. This is where it is so freeing to be in your space. Your partner feels free because you don't judge him. You don't constantly make demands and criticism. Your friends feel free because there's no expectation. The next level is I am magnetic. You are powerful. Your internal beauty radiates and is magnetic to those who come into contact with you. You create with ease, grace and flow. You do less yet receive more. You're just in flow at this point. And it is so fucking radiant that everyone is just so attracted to being in your space. People and opportunities flow to you. You are in co-creation with the universe and your magnificence speaks for itself. Life is fun and juicy. And you dwell in the knowledge that you are fully supported by the universe and the current of life. You can hold the greatest degree of polarity at this point. Your ability to hold high highs and low lows and know that you can handle them both will increase your experience of joy and excitement in your life. Because for as long as you're scared of falling or failing, you will limit what, you're, what you think you're capable of and you'll stick in the safe zone. And trust me, the safe zone is fucking boring. And that's why you're bored to death with your life and you don't feel lit up or inspired because you're in this safe zone because you're scared of falling. So you refuse to climb to heights. When you start embodying, I am capable and I'm learning to hold failure as a possibility and a probability. You cannot succeed without failing. You cannot experience light if you don't know what dark is. Life is not exciting if you don't know what boredom is. Joy doesn't exist without sorrow. The greater degree that you can hold these and know that you are fully supported by the universe and in flow with the current of life and everything serves you, the better your life experience is going to be, the more abundant and fully experienced it's going to be. Your superpowers of manifestations at this point have been activated and you're just in flow. So I have moments where I, I embody and drop in between those last three, like depending on what's happening in my life and how aligned I am. And, and when I have those moments in the I am magnetic, it's breathtaking. And it's just that muscle, the more I use it, the more time I spend in that space. And these levels will be reflected in what you earn as well. The last level is I am her. And this is what I believe spiritually we are all born to accomplish and lead ourselves to become or to return home to. You have landed as the queen archetype. You have merged I am someone with the creator inside of you. So you're no longer this separate identity. You are like divine. You are oneness with the universe. You must create offerings at this point that serve and protect your energy in this space because you're going to be very highly sought after in this space. Everyone wants a piece of you because you're just so magical. Um, 
for you will be highly sought after and the momentum of your impact must flow without working harder. You are the woman in all your power that you were born to be. I am connected to all things and the universe is inside of me. Anything is possible. So at this point, you are just in full service. You are, you are love. And, you know, that's something to aspire to be and something that maybe not every woman will arrive at um, in terms of being there always. But I do believe that we can drop into that energy. We can choose to embody that energy. And that's, you know, that feeling of being in that beautiful state, that oneness is that you can, in that state of gratitude, you can imagine what being her feels like. And you can every day work on cultivating her cultivating your highest self, dropping into that energy, even if it's just for a moment. All right, let me stop share here. So those are my lessons, how I went from a woman who was so limited in her thinking to a woman who feels limitless, maybe not in every moment, right? I'm not in one consciousness in every moment, but when I feel myself in suffering states of anxiousness, and there's still areas of my life I wor I'm working on and still conditioning from my past that I'm working on that can put me in that state, but I recognize it quicker. I'm constantly working on that muscle and I spend more of my life now in a beautiful state, in states of love and joy and connection and peace and excitement. I create in my life the feelings I want to feel. You know, we sit back and we're loyal to all of those crappy states and we don't realize we can bring joy through every door we walk through. We can bring more love to our relationships by going first. We can expand the states that we want. You know, if you have a moment of joy today, I encourage you to feel into it and see how much you can expand it and how long you can stretch it out and experience that moment for and practice that over time so that that becomes your temperament, your habitual way of being. Because if I go back to my early lessons, I had trained my temperament to be one of friction and um, highly strung, right? Whereas like now I'm so relaxed that it's so relaxing to be in my space. Even my daughters, my youngest daughter has verbally expressed to me, mom, you've changed so much. Like, it's just so nice to be in your space. And for a young girl to be able to express that, you know that change has occurred, right? For her to be able to remember what it must have felt like to be in my energy space. So this, when you apply these things and some rituals, which I'll end with, you can go from limit, limited thinking to limitless thinking, and that will transform your experience of life completely. So I recommend taking up a journal practice before you react, take time to think about your feelings, to write them down, to think about, to shine a spotlight on them. When you feel triggered, use that as a spotlight for something you need to delve deeper in, not as a way to make someone wrong because it made you feel bad. It's something inside of you. No one can make you feel anything. That is a choice, right? So you've got to stop take, giving your power away at every opportunity and take it back and cultivate that self-awareness, cultivate self-responsibility, take charge of your happiness and how you feel every day and how you're showing up. Take responsibility when, you, when you're just a reactive bitch in your relationship. Like one of my mantras in my mission statement is there's ease around going first and saying sorry. Nothing good from comes from closing off. You know, that is one of my commitments in my relationship. Like I find it easy to apologize and go first because I prefer to be in a state of love and connection than being right. Love and connection is more valuable to me and peace at this point than being right, right? So journaling, vision statement, life-changing. Anytime I am in a state of uncertainty or stress, this realigns me. It makes me feel excited about the future and it makes me feel certain that the future is exciting and I have the power to make it so music dancing meditation all of these creative energies will absolutely enhance your life and it doesn't need to be for hours a day it's a morning ritual and an evening ritual even if you've only got five minutes you deserve it you have to use that muscle and discipline yourself to take that time and know that 
the energy input, what you're going to get back in return is going to be so magnificent in relation to the energy that you're putting in. You're going to get so much more back, so much more back. You know, even this call, so many people are going to say they'll watch the replay back because they couldn't be on live, but they won't. They won't value taking the time. But if we don't shift, our life doesn't shift. When we shift, everything shifts around us. If you're not happy in an area of your life, you shift first and everything outside of you shifts in accordance with you. Trust that, trust that you are supported. So this was my journey or part of my journey into becoming a self-ignited woman. These lessons have transformed every part of my life. And I just, I have so many moments of just sheer gratitude for the mentors that have come into my life. And I'm just sharing my journey because I feel so abundantly blessed and I feel responsible to share that on and, and give that gift to women who are ready to receive it in the way that people in my life had the courage to speak truth to me, to say the things that were hard that I needed to hear. And I was so ready to hear it. So yeah, I hope that has served you today. I wish I could go back and read all your comments. I might stay on and just read them because I, I love hearing your feedback. If I've, I'm sorry if I've missed any questions, um, but we can always connect offline. <sighs> if you are new to this space, it's the first time you've joined us. We do have a 90-day coaching program as part of our business mentoring. So if that interests you, then speak to your ambassador and they can share how you can be a part of this coaching the next 90 day coaching, I had a download this morning, I'm calling it Ascend. And it's basically in alignment with what I just showed you the self mastery scale to scale your business. And we're going to be working on our ascension into becoming her and everything we're doing is going to be contributing to that. So it's still our 90 days of clarity to activate our desires because in our ascension, we become the woman who is magnetic, who is a powerful manifester thank you so much for joining me. I feel so blessed to be able to share with you all today. And I just, I hope you take a moment to give to yourself, to love yourself, to create beauty, to see beauty in your world and in yourself today. Thanks everyone.